Welcome back to the series in the ultimate guide in buying a used Tesla. And for this part two series, we are talking about buying from a private seller. There's a little bit more uncertainty because there's not really a system. It's just two parties, like two private people doing a transaction. So there's not like a whole system like a dealership or Tesla where it's all set up. So let's talk about the pros and the cons. So private seller is awesome, but can also be very, very frustrating. It could be actually a very, very good deal. It could also be a very bad deal. Oftentimes uh, they have less owners and you know who is driving it. So it can be well taken care of. Again, this could be also a con. It doesn't mean that everybody is gonna take care of their Tesla. It could be the opposite and it could be very, very dirty. I think a really, really big pro to this process is gonna be that you can actually talk to the owner themselves. So for example, if you go from a dealership, you can get a Carfax, right? Those are typically free and it pulls up and it says minor accident. But other than minor accident, the direction of where they did, oftentimes they don't actually know more details. And even if you ask them about, you know, previous ownership, uh, they typically don't want to tell you. And Tesla's very, very careful about not telling you any of that information. Because of the used market is so strong right now too in the Tesla, Tesla space, Sometimes there could be an all out bid war, right? So they talk to you, they say, oh, can you do 62? You agree. And then all of a sudden, like 10 minutes later, it's like, can you do 63 now, 64? And then it just keeps going up. So that's something that's really frustrating. Um, another con I think would be that uh, sometimes they're just not as responsive, right? Of course they have uh, incentive to sell because they might be wanting to either get a new car or a different car or whatever that is. But the incentive is not as strong as a dealership where the salespeople have pays based on commission and number of vehicles they sell. Whereas a private party, they're driving it, they're just kind of taking their time. So they might not go that extra mile if you ask for details like, oh, can you take a picture of the screen and show me? They might not do that right away for you. Or they might think you're like sketchy if you ask that question. Um, a, another con is that a lot of times they don't prefer financing because they kind of want the cashier's check, cash, upfront. Uh, you could finance it. I mean, you could go to a bank and tell them that you're buying used and you could deal with it, but it does get a little bit more complex. The other thing is going to be oftentimes the private owner is going to have a lien um, and they still have a loan balance that they need to pay. What that means is you have to pay off their balance, give them a cashier's check, right, for the remaining balance. And then after that, you get to take the car but they would have to get the title sent to their home and then from there they have to actually mail it to you. So you're looking at two to four weeks additional until you get your actual title. Tip, if they have a local bank that's there, I would highly recommend trying to get the title right away. Figure out what you really want, you know. First of all, figure out which model you want and then after that, figure out the features that you want. Some models are a lot more complex. For example, like the S and the X can be really, really complex. Like six seater or five seater or seven seater. Like there's a lot of things that you need to consider. Does it have FSC? Does it have autopilot 1.0? You know, these are things that you need to consider. And if that's important to you, make sure you don't settle. You gotta make sure that if you're spending like 50, 60, 70, $80,000 on a car, get what you want, right? So make sure that you're very clear about one of those, what those requirements are. So before we get into where to actually find a used vehicle from a private party, please click on that subscribe button because this is part two of a three series that we're gonna talk about the ultimate guide in buying a used Tesla. So let's get right into it. So the used Tesla from a private party, um, honestly, this is a little bit of a surprise, is, is, is the best place is going with uh, uh, Facebook. The reason why I recommend Facebook is they have this thing where you could filter by location. And these are going to be your absolute best deals, right? Because it reaches, I mean, you could go past, I believe, 500 miles, but it reaches your um, surrounding areas. And if, if you say that you're local, I mean, they might be willing to work with you rather than someone coming from California or something like that, right? So this is a really good start is to just go to a marketplace and go to, you know, search for like Tesla Model 3, for example, check your filters. For me, I put like 60 miles if I want to go, but you could go 500 miles. It just means that a lot of people might be looking at it too. But once I do that, 60 miles, you can see that there's one in like Riceville. There's one Chattanooga right here. You got this one right here that has, uh, comes with enhanced autopilot. That's really important to know, right? This car will park itself and drive itself in the interstate. It is a $6,000 package. That is true. Uh, rear end repaired fully and certified by Tesla. So that's one thing to note is that, you know, the value of your car is going to drop 
if it's rear-ended, right? So it's not a fully clean vehicle, but you can ask them that, like what actually happened, you know, how much did it cost to repair it? And these information is gonna be good whether you should buy it or not. I just missed this, I don't know how I missed it, but at the top it says rebuilt title. So uh, I typically don't buy rebuilt titles, so I would definitely uh, go away from that. So this is kind of what I would do is just look at some of the deals. And the other thing I look at is like time, right? This one was listed a week ago, that's pretty new. Anything past like two, three weeks, I'm already going like, what's wrong with this? But it's worth looking into. So this is a really good way to start as finding. And the reason why I say this is because again, it's local. So you have less people you're competing with regarding the car. So other places that I would recommend is gonna be groups. So this is like a Tesla for sale by owner. I'm like, I probably shouldn't share this because now I'm gonna miss out on a lot of deals because you guys are gonna know my secrets. And you got stuff like Tesla buy and sell, and there's a lot of cars here too. And then this is like Tesla steals deals and wholesale. And there's uh, 27,000 members in here as well. And of course, I'm part of the Tesla TN group. These are amazing places to find used vehicles as well because it's local, it's a very tight knit community. Most people know each other and it's just really easy. So there's two other places that I'm gonna mention. One is gonna be only use Tesla. Uh, this is a really great place to find a used Tesla from a private party. And you could kind of find the model that you want. There's a lot of Model 3s right now. And then do your location. And then the way this works is you click on it and typically there's a phone number or you could log in to contact seller and then you could start talking with this person. So I have sold one Tesla through this website as well. And then the other one that I would highly recommend is gonna be Find My Electric. And this is also good. I've sold some cars here as well. And you can see that they have not only Teslas, but they also have Ford Lightning Lariat right here, right? So a couple things here is like you can actually pay to be featured on the top. So just keep that in mind. There are some sponsored posts. So it, once I clicked on, you know, the private party, you can see there's 21 listings for a Tesla Model 3. And then I could also do like oh, uh, price low to high. I want a good deal. There's one for 45,000 in New York and then you just kind of click on it. And then same thing with only use Tesla, you could actually contact seller this way and then you'll get access to the number and then that's how you talk. Like this is not a dealer website. So you can see there's like three photos and one of them is like in the dark in the supercharger. And then uh, it's not a lot to work with. So you might have to talk a little bit more. So these are the places that I would recommend looking for Teslas. So now that I showed you where to find a used car from a private party, we're gonna talk about the process of buying it from a private party. So once you find the car, the way it works is you typically contact them. In Facebook, it's going to be a messenger, right? So you go back and forth and typically what you want to do is ask, to say, ask a lot of these questions like, does it have FSC? Does it have autopilot? Does it have uh, enhanced autopilot at the least? Is it clean title? Uh, do you have a Carfax? So that you don't have to pay money, right? If they already have it, maybe. If it's local, right? Because I, I, I recommend that you look local. Go ahead and take a look at the car. And if you can look at it quick, they know you're serious. And before you do, if they don't have Carfax, I'd highly recommend just running it. I know it's a little bit more expensive, but it's worth it. It's worth the trip, especially if you have to drive out a little bit more. And if it's a really good deal, just maybe it's too good of a deal, run the Carfax and then make sure that it's clean. I've seen listings where like, um, it's kind of weird, but it's their car, but they don't really know their car that well. And that's probably why they're selling. And they're like, oh yeah, mine has FSD. And then I asked them to send them a photo and they sent me a photo and he says full self-driving computer, but it doesn't actually have like FSD, if that makes sense. So they may think that they do because it says that, but they really don't. So they're valuing their car higher when it's actually a much lower valued car for that reason. So you wanna ask for pictures, you wanna ask for information before you make it out, do your car facts. And again, make sure, confirm that it's a car that you want. If you're getting an X or S, make sure that it's the right battery size, that it has the right uh, seat configuration that you want. You know, same thing with the three, is it a white seat, black seat? All of these things you wanna confirm. And also one question that I like to ask, honestly, is why are you selling it? And I wanna know, I wanna know why they're selling it. They might be like, hey, I, I got a three, I need a Y, I have a family, I wanna get a bigger car. Great, good reason. And also like, it helps uh, if they like you, right? Dealer, they just wanna sell the car to you, but this is a private pr person. So if you kind of converse a little bit and kind of get to know them a little bit more, typically I think you have a higher success. So instead of just a transactional, typically I try to 
kind of ask them a little bit more questions about the car, why they're selling, until I get to that transactional phase. So once you get to that stage, a lot of times people like to FaceTime or Facebook, Facebook video, and then you can kind of look at the car and ask more questions then. If they're local especially, you could just say, hey, can we just meet? Let me look at the car in person, love to look at it. And also that tells them that you're actually really serious about it. And then you could go see them, ask them more questions, find interest. And then after that, you can decide whether to buy it or not. That also gives you some time if you have to finance or find a way to you know, get the money. And then maybe after you're interested and it looks good, everything checks out, that's when you would meet again and then do the transaction, whatever route that you go. So typically they'll say, um, you know, can we meet at a bank or a police station or some, someplace safe? And I would recommend that because again, you're dealing with a private person. You just want to make sure that you meet in a safe area. And I hate to say it, but there's a lot of scammers out there. So be very, very careful. And if you have any questions, just ask a friend, have someone else look at it. Um, I think that's really a good practice. But you might go there and realize that there was a really, really big scratch that they didn't disclose. Um, I think when something like that happens, keep note of them and say, look, man, like, I didn't realize that that big dent was there. That's gonna cost a good amount of money. Can you help me out a little bit? Maybe we can meet in the middle. And you could kind of negotiate that way, right? But typically, if it's a pristine car, it's gonna be really hard to negotiate that. So typically, what happens in a private party sale is you kind of pay for what you guys are re agreed on because the negotiation kind of happened with that text or the messenger or the video chat and so on. And then after that, if the, again, if there's a lien and a loan still payments being made, you have to make that payment, give them a cashier's check. That's really the recommended way. Uh, once you're good, you do the transaction and then you can get your car and then you're ready to go and you have a new Tesla or I guess a new used Tesla. So who is this for? I really think this is awesome for people like, if you have friends and family like selling a Tesla, you're probably gonna get a really good deal. And it's also a, a like there's a relationship between you and that person. So that's a really good time to get a Tesla from if they're selling theirs. The other reason is if you're really looking for a deal, sometimes there's some amazing deals from private parties. Maybe they wanna get let go of their car really, really fast. Or maybe like sometimes like they just got an X, they don't need their Y anymore. So they're just gonna let it go for a decent price because they wanna sell it fast, right? And they want people that have cash in hand that can like buy. So in this case, speed could be actually a pretty big factor because you could say, look, I have cash in hand. I can pay you cash. Can we meet tomorrow? It's a good deal. Let's do the deal tomorrow. So that can be actually a negotiation tactic um, for a private party much more than if you were doing it at a dealership or Tesla. Like Tesla and dealership won't really care if you have cash. Well, hopefully that covered a lot more and you learned a little bit about buying from a private party. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions and you wanna share your stories about buying private party, let us know in the comments below. We'll see you in part three. And this time we're gonna be talking about buying from Tesla.com.